Um, just a question. Um, how would you feel if I told you that going to a soccer championship with your family could be a fatal decision? And how many of you have actually heard of a group called the Hooligans? So the hooligan groups are basically these gangs that go to soccer championships, and today I'm going to be talking about their history, their background, and um, basically what ultimately leads these people to become a part of these gangs. So um, to start off with their history, um, according to ESPN in 2018, Borden states, that um, they're mostly in European countries, especially um, France, as well as Russia and England. They've been around since 1863, so they've been around for quite a while, but throughout the years they've gotten more and more popular, more people have joined them, and they were actually pioneered by the British, so it started in England. Um, the violence and crime took off in Russia after the Soviet Union crash, and um, typically in their culture back then, um, violence was a was a big problem, and so a lot of the people joined these gangs because it was a part of their culture, and then it became like a, a separate subculture over there. Um, so there was a Russia versus England game that was take, taking place in France, and it led to major destruction. So people were destroying cafes, shops, stores. They were just going crazy, and um, the Russian Federation actually got in trouble with the soccer organization and they had repercussions. And then um, in the Russian culture, they even have slang for the fights that go on. So the oh, pistol is a type of traditional Russian um, term that they use for when people are beaten so badly you can't even recognize them from all the cuts and the bruises, the blood, and it's actually terrible. And then solyanka is a traditional Russian soup that they make in their country. And they use that in the fights because there's fists, there's blood, and there's just a bunch of humans in like one giant human soup. It's actually quite gross. And then in 1983, one of the gangs actually chased down the army itself. That's how strong they are. So why do people decide to become a part of this subculture? A lot of people do it because they want to deal with anger. According to the Social Issues Research Center, in 1996, um, Roth states that there were over 100 arrests, hundreds of um, injuries, and two deaths. This was in 1886, and then now the numbers have gotten completely out of hand. There's been thousands of arrests, thousands and thousands of injuries, and over 100 deaths. And then Andy Nichols, he's a former uh, hooligan, and he says that a lot of people do it for the buzz. They feel like they belong to a camaraderie, it's kind of like a family, it gives them purpose, it's a way for them to feel like they're making a difference, which is not a good one. And then there was a movie called The Green Street Hooligan, and it actually glamorized becoming a hooligan for people, so I think that's where people kind of heard about it, and then ended up like, getting involved. And then back in the 1800s, when it first started, there wasn't technology, there wasn't much for people to do, so they really didn't have anything else but to get into trouble. So, um, in conclusion, what we can learn is there's been many decades of hooligans, there's been lots of injuries and arrests and sadly deaths, but there's something that we must do because if it continues, it's going to get even more out of hand. As you can see that throughout the years, the numbers have just gotten higher and higher. So it's important that we take a call to action and prevent it from coming into our country. And we don't want people in the United States being scared or bringing their families to places where they could get into trouble.